Here are some reminders to help you get the most out of your dive CD lessons. First, work the problems with me. Work every single problem that I work and take notes on everything that I write on the board. One thing I encourage you to do is on the first practice problem, work that one with me, but then for the second and subsequent ones, pause the CD, try to work the problem on your own, then fast forward to the answer. If you got it right, great, you can move on to the next one. If you got it wrong, rewind the CD, look at how to pro solve the problem, and figure out how to do it correctly. Next, anytime you need to, pause and rewind the CD until you understand that particular concept. The ability to pause and rewind so easily is what makes dive CD lessons so much better than a live classroom lecture, so make sure and take advantage of that technology. Next, remember the purpose of math is to teach you to think and to solve problems, to effectively and efficiently think and solve problems. In the lower math levels, there's lots of mental math. In the upper levels especially, this is the most important purpose of math, is to teach you to think and to solve problems. Next, do all of the problems in the problem sets. It depends on the course that you're doing, but typically you'll do three to five problem sets a week, so that means three to five CD lessons plus a test. Next, work the homework problems and your test problems too. Work those vertically. Split your paper in two and work them vertically. And of course, make sure you show your work on your problems too. As you work them vertically, write each step down and write each subsequent step underneath the previous one. And this will help you sometimes to recognize patterns a little bit easier and help you solve the problem better. Also use a calculator sparingly, only for geometry problems and some word problems. Don't use it for math 7, 6 or below that for, for any of that. Algebra half and up, use it sparingly. And lastly, have a good attitude. Every day you do school, you have a choice to make. It is your personal choice to have a good attitude, work hard, do your best, or to be lazy, complain, whine, and have a bad attitude. So choose right now to have a good attitude. Dive in, take advantage of this CD lesson, and do your best to learn the math that you're going to learn today. In Lesson 10, we'll be covering rules for divisibility of whole numbers. And there's four rules that I've written on the board there, and all these apply for whole numbers. And a number is divisible by two. That means that you'll get a whole number result if the last digit in that number or in the dividend is 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. A number is divisible by three if the sum of the digits is divisible by three. And that just seems kind of strange, but that's true. For example, look at 21. You know that 21 is divisible by 3, and that equals 7. We'll add the digits up in 21. 2 plus 1 is 3. If the sum of the digits is divisible by 3, and that is true there, then that number is divisible by 3, and you get a whole number result or quotient. And then rule 3, a number is divisible by 5 if its last digit is 5 or 0. And the fourth rule, if a number is divisible by 10 if its last digit is 0. So those are good rules to remember and that helps you when you're having to do a lot of division and you want to real quickly and easily do that division. You can think about these different rules. You might want to write these rules down on the inside cover of your book or somewhere that you can remember them and refer to them frequently. They will come in very handy throughout your mathematics career. To study our tests of divisibility, let's do these practice problems. Which of the following numbers are divisible by A, 3, B, 5, or C, 10? Well, let's just look at each number, and the first thing we ought to do is add up the digits. And let's look at 23,280. 2 plus 3 is 5, 2 plus 8 is 10, 5 and 10 is 15. That would be divisible by 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5, so this number is divisible by 3, so we'll say A works for that one. And then it ends in a 0, so it's divisible by 5 if its last digit is 0, divisible by 10 if its last digit is 0. So A, B, and C are all answers for that problem, or for that number. Now let's look at 24,820. Let's add up the digits first, 4, 5, 6, 
and then 10, that would be 16. That's not divisible by 3. And when we mean divisible by, that means the quotient would be a whole number. 16 divided by 3, that is not a whole number result. So it's not divisible by 3, but it ends in a 0. And so that means it's going to be divisible by 5 and 10. So B and C would be answers for that one. And then the last one, 153,545, add up the digits. 1 and 5 is 6, plus 3 is 9, plus a 5 is 14, plus 4 is 18, plus 5 is 23. That's not divisible by 3. It ends in a 5, so it's divisible by 5, but it's not divisible by 10 because it doesn't end in 0. So B is the only appropriate choice on that one. Part of your study of algebra and mathematics in general is studying how numbers behave. And it's just interesting that a number is divisible by 3 if you add its digits together. That's just a property of numbers. That's just the way they behave. Of these divisibility tests that we have here, that's probably the most important one to remember because you forget that one the most. I mean, it's pretty easy to remember numbers divisible by 2. They're even numbers. Their last digit is an even number divisible by 5 if they end in a 5 or a 0, or divisible by 10 if they end in a 0. But divisible by 3 if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3. That's just kind of more difficult to remember. So make sure and remember that rule for divisibility as well as the other ones. Okay, well that's all for lesson 10.